Hi, I'm Chef Tanya Whitehouse with The Food Connection here at the University of Kentucky. And today I'm going to show you how to make a rustic apple tart. Okay, so we wanna start with our crust first. And this is a very simple flour and fat based crust. We're gonna make it super easy by using our food processor. Now, if you don't have a food processor, you can easily stir this up in a bowl um, with a couple of forks, or if you have a pastry blender, that will work just as well. So this is going to be a very basic pastry crust with flour, fat, a little salt, and cold water. I've been keeping my ice water in the fridge just so it stays nice and cold. And I've been keeping my butter in the freezer so that it is really nice and hard and that'll help it coat each little piece of flour that it comes into contact with. So we're gonna start by measuring out a cup and a half of just plain all-purpose flour. I'm going to do this in the food processor today and I'll show you how quickly it'll mix up in the food processor. So I'm going to scoop lightly the flour into my measuring cups and then add it to my food processor bowl. That's one cup right there and one half cup and you're not smashing the flour down in, you're just lightly spooning it and then adding it to the bowl. I'm gonna hang on to my flour though because I'll need a little bit to roll out our pastry crust. And I have chopped, I don't know how well you can see, but I have cut up the butter into tiny little pieces. So I'm gonna break those off and scatter them around the flour in the bowl. And this is six ounces of butter, which is, if you're measuring that in sticks, that's a stick and a half. So I'm gonna put that around and then we can toss those. I'm gonna use about a, just a good pinch of regular salt. I tend to use kosher salt. And then on the ice water, I'm gonna use one third cup. I'm gonna go ahead and measure that out. But what we need to do first, okay, I'm going to pulse the butter with the flour in the food processor first. So this is flour, salt, and butter. And I'm gonna pulse until the butter breaks up and kind of coats and makes the flour coarse. You can leave sort of larger pieces of butter, but nothing bigger than say a pea. And it's really starting to look like that. So we've got some coarseness in the flour and then some little chunks of butter as well. That's a good time to add the cold water. I'm going to add the water as I am processing these ingredients again in a slow stream. And you want to keep on processing. You'll start to see everything will clump together. And then I'm going to hold it down for longer pulses. And you'll see it start to form clumps. That's what we're looking for. And when it starts to sort of move around in a large clump together, that's when you can stop pulsing. And we can pull this out very carefully. Watch the blade. And we're gonna shape it into a disc. Now we'll wrap this disc and we'll put it into the refrigerator for about an hour and we can work on our filling while we do that. Now, once we get the disc of dough into the refrigerator, we wanna make our filling. And so I've got some apples right here. I'm gonna peel these apples, cut them up, but since apples brown so quickly, I'm gonna take a little container of water and I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of lemon juice to that. So that prevents some of the browning. And that'll keep our apples fresh for our filling. So today we'll be using these Honeycrisp apples. Uh, you can get any from your local orchards or from your local stores. Uh, the cooking varieties and sometimes the tartar varieties like uh, Granny Smith might be better for this. These are honey crisp, which are a nice balance between sweet and tart. And so we're just gonna take the peel off very quickly. 
You, if you are a fan of the peel and want to leave that on, you can certainly do that. Sometimes the peel can, um, it won't break down the same as the apples. And we, we want these to be tender once the tart comes out. Now for me, the easiest way to break down apples is to set them on their shoulders because they're much more stable that way. And then I cut off the sides. So a lot of people like to take the core out of the apple first, but I find that this is really stable and you don't have to have any specialty equipment like an apple core. And then we're gonna cut these big chunks of apple into thin slices. And we're gonna put them in the water as soon as we do that. Just take your time, put each piece on a flat side, and that way you can cut very thin pieces. I like to hold my knife uh, by the spine and curl up my fingers so that I can work quickly without any potential for harming myself. But take your time and cut your apples down and just add them bit by bit to your water. When we add lemon to water, we call that acidulated water. We're just adding an acid. You could also add a little bit of vinegar. That is also an acid. And we're gonna break down all of these apples. You do need to work a little quickly so that as you're working with them and then stop for a moment and throw them in the water to prevent that browning. Now we're gonna measure out three and a half tablespoons of sugar and a tablespoon of flour and get that ready to the side. And we're gonna grab our tart dough. So hopefully by now our tart dough has been in resting in the refrigerator for about an hour. I like to use a dry cutting board when I roll anything out. I've got my rolling pin right here and a little bit of that extra flour that I reserved. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little flour out on the surface and we'll take our disc of dough and we'll place it on there. And we may wanna take a little bit of flour and sprinkle on top. Just enough, just enough to prevent our rolling pin from sticking. And then you roll from the center and just keep turning your dough. You may want to watch it. You're trying to get somewhat of a circle, but now you don't have to be super a perfectionist about this. You might want to turn your dough over so that way you're working on both sides and you just keep pushing and pulling. And we want to get down to about quarter to an eighth of an inch thin. So I'm gonna start really pushing it out from the center now and I'm gonna keep turning it. So I'm trying to make sure that nothing's sticking and that we're getting somewhat of a circular shape. I like to turn my rolling pin different ways and that helps keep the rolling even. And don't forget your edges, don't get them too thin, but you also don't want them thicker than the middle. I'm gonna move this around in the flour just a little bit as I keep working it out to the edges of the cutting board. And on this, we still wanna work a little quickly as well because we don't want all that fat heating up right now. We want it heating up in the oven after we've put everything together. That's a pretty good circle. We're starting to get pretty thin. And you notice I'm not worried about the edges. And it's still moving pretty well. Let's see if we can turn this. Make sure it's not sticking one more time. And one more roll and I think we've got it. Now, what we need to do is transfer this to a sheet pan. Any old sheet pan, pizza pan, anything like that. I like to put a little parchment in here that helps with cleanup, that prevents the pastry from sticking because you've got some apples and sweetness and sugar bubbling in there. So I'm just gonna flop this over on my rolling pin and that will help transfer so that the dough doesn't tear. And then I just unroll it. Now that I've got my dough on the pan, I'm gonna take 
that sugar and that flour and mix them together. And we're gonna put that down as the base for our apples. The sugar will sweeten them a little bit. The flour will thicken the juice just a tiny bit. If you wanted to, you could add probably about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon right here. So we're gonna make a little circle. Sprinkle about half of your mixture in. And I'm gonna drain my apples. I'll just do it right here into this bowl. Because we don't wanna make our dough soggy. And you can make whatever pattern you want. So if you just wanna tile them, I like to go in sort of a spiral pattern. I start in the middle. And if you want to get really creative with this, you could make any pattern you wanted. This is a good job also if you have family members helping out, if you have younger family members helping with this, this would be a great job for them to do rather than cutting up the apples. And I'm gonna double up on this so that we have a nice thick tart and use plenty of apples to the dough that we have. And you just keep going around and around, just barely overlapping. When I say tile, I just mean you're just letting the pieces slightly overlap. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep spreading out just a little bit. So I've almost got my first layer on here. And once we get that first layer on, we can add the second half of our sugar flour mixture and then finish the pie. So we'll go out just a wee bit more. Not too much, you wanna leave about two to three inches around your apples. So I'm good with this size. I'm gonna sprinkle the rest of my dry mixture, the sugar and the flour mixed together, right here on top of my apples. Make sure to get some in the middle. And don't forget that the most visible part is gonna be right in the center. And we'll reinforce these outer edges one more time. And now if you wanna get a little creative in the middle and have a few pieces just filling in. Now the easy part, you don't have to worry about the edges, you just start to bring them up, bring one, one little fold over. And then you just make a pleat. So I'm using my finger to fold the dough. About every three inches or so, I make another pleat. And so you get this little irregular scallopy edge. And the last one you may need to sort of pinch on both sides. There we go in that. Now, I have a couple of teaspoons of melted butter here and I have a pastry brush. I'm gonna take this melted butter and just brush it on my pastry so that it gets a nice golden brown. I have set my oven to 400 degrees. This is gonna take a little while to cook because you're cooking down raw, ap raw apples. If you are a fan of the really big sugar on your pastries, you could uh, sprinkle a little bit of that onto the crust as well. And there we go. So we'll pop that in the oven uh, and then we'll come back to it when everything's cooked down. Now our tart should be ready to pull out of the oven. Our pastry is golden brown and our apples are all cooked. You might notice that uh, the apples that have cooked, they're a little bit dry on the top layer, but you will see that there's a little bit of sauce inside created by that mixture of the apple juices and the flour. To kind of make this look really presentable on the plate, we're going to take a tiny bit of warmed apricot preserves. And you can strain these if you want, if you don't want any chunks in it. And you don't have to do this step, it's just, it makes it nice and glossy. It works best if you can let this sit for a few minutes before you cut it so that the juices have time to thicken a little bit more now that you've taken it off the heat. 
but most people won't be able to wait that long. Just a little brush on that nice pattern that we've got. Now to serve, uh, you could transfer this to a cutting board if you don't feel confident in it again. And we're just going to make a straight cut through the center. And the reason I like a serrated is it tends to cut whatever pieces of apple I encounter so that I can cut all the way through and get clean pieces that come apart. And you might have to take your knife through a couple of times and then you'll see it wiggle apart. And then I'll cut those halves into halves and then those quarters into eighths. Trying to saw back and forth a little bit just to impress. You sort of need to press where you feel any resistance. But once you get to these little slices, they do want to move around a little bit. There we go. And to serve, you just can plate it up. If you wanted to, you could do some vanilla bean ice cream on top of that, or a little drizzle of caramel might be nice, or just uh, as is.